Hey guys, what is up? Ioki here, bringing you some more Janna coaching. Today we are coaching a player by the name of Space Bazooka. This is in low silver, high bronze. He's currently bronze one. Uh, before we get into the actual gameplay, I do want to go over your runes because I noticed that you're running a uh, guardian page on Janna. I would really, really recommend the two popular pages for Janna. Um, is a more offensive build where you go Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Celerity, Scorch, Taste of Blood, Relentless Hunter. So this is uh, when you have matchups that you really think that you can um, have a big presence in the lane, like poke them out and really get them pressured under turrets and be farming plays, things like that. And if you think the lane's a little bit too hard, like I probably would have ran this following page in this in this game. I would have gone the Airy page, uh, and that's Airy, Mana Flow, um, Band, Celerity, Gathering Storm, and then resolve for your secondary tree, font of life, and revitalize. So that's obviously like a more peely, kind of typical Janna e um, oriented page. But I definitely would not be running Guardian. It's um it's not worthless, but it's it's definitely not great for what you want to be doing. And one other thing I want to point out that I would 100% be bringing Ignite and 90 95 to 98 percent of my Janna games. The only time that I would really bring Exhaust is when I'm against a uh, an assassin in the mid lane that has very very easily cancelable or exhaustible um, windows of attack so things like Zed you know exactly when Zed's about to do his damage because he uses his ultimate uh, things like LeBlanc you know exactly when she's going to use her damage because she W's in on your ADC um, the only really th close thing to that on their team is Master Yi and it's a little bit hard to, to exhaust Master Yi because sometimes he'll Q you he'll get off 60 to 70 percent of his damage bef and then he's untargeted so you can't actually exhaust them. Ignite, 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 and swap out to either a comment or an airy page. So that being said, let's get to, uh, let's see how you did play with the Guardian page. I like the proactivity. I love this. Um, one thing I would say is that every single game, I do like that you got out of uh, base. You're not sitting in base like an idiot like this Heimerdinger is. But if your team's not going to help you get vision, you're in the invasion phase of the game. So the game starts at... at zero seconds it doesn't start when minions spawn or when minions get the lane you're in the invasion state of the game so you, you need to be thinking about and this is going to this is going to be something that you hear me say a lot you need to be thinking about the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is that their entire team showed up to the game on time are five stacked in this bush and are coming into your jungle over here um, they could also be doing it over here. So if your team's not going to help you get vision, what you need to do is immediately keep showing up to the game on time like you did, drop a ward here, and then come over here and get vision on this gate. Because that way, worst case scenario, there's no way they can invade you without you seeing. But what you're doing here, it's good that you came over here and got vision. You didn't drop your ward. So now, when you come over here... What's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is that now they're coming through here. So if your team's not going to help you get vision, drop the ward and do it all yourself and come over here. But it looks like a relatively uneventful, um, uneventful uh, first minute of the game. I do like that you seem to be aware of the fact that you need to guard your gates, but you could be doing it a lot more efficiently. And now... Remember, man, worst case scenario, now you've been over here. What if Thresh and MF are over here? It, worst case scenario, Thresh and MF are in that, are in that bush and you die. So w w one thing that I always try to get people to think of, and I, it's, you're, you're going to get annoyed hearing me say it so much, but I promise you, this is how high elo players operate. They are constantly thinking about what is the actual absolute worst case scenario because it's going to shape your your decision making it's going to shape your decision making in areas like this what if they're in that bush that's why you should let draven go forward a little bit because he's he's a little bit um you're a little bit more squishy than him all right so we have got spell thieves good 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 now this is a little bit experimental, and this may not be um, true once we actually get into the, the bulk of Season 10, but right now, honestly, going Relic Shield instead of Spell Thieves and um, lanes where you're obviously not confident is actually really, really nice. It gives you a nice little amount of uh, health and still gives you like uh, 60 free AP by the time you've upgraded it to Tier 3. Um, so if you're not confident that you're going to be able to be trading a lot, and by the, by looking at your runes and your, uh, your summoner spell, you don't think that you can win this lane. 
Um, going Relic Shield really isn't all that bad. They also lowered the execution threshold on ranged champions. So any any minion that's below 30%, you can actually execute. So you could actually execute that where it wasn't like that in, in previous seasons. It was really hard to use Relic Shield as a ranged champion. But it's really easy now. Um, that also gives you the ability to push the wave, to push for level 2, uh, which is very, very important. Okay, so I don't like that you're walking up so close to them with just like basically assuming that Thresh isn't going to do anything. You walking all the way up here when Draven is behind you, uh, Thresh, a good Thresh, will walk up and flay you. It doesn't even look like he started flay, which is very, very silly of him. Good Threshes will start flay. They get those empowered autos. He's going to sit over here in the bush. You're going to walk up all the way here. He's going to flay you. You're going to be taking minion aggro. You're going to be, ta if, if, you know, if you if you fight back, you're going to be taking MF autos. It's going to be a really bad scenario. So what you want to be doing is you want to be, try to match the aggression of your ADC. So you want to be roughly even with your ADC. You, you don't want to be way up here when he's back here. You also want to be ready to capitalize on a level 2 power spike. So you need to learn the amount of minions um, that it takes to hit level 2 and then start pushing forward. Start moving forward when you hit that level 2 because if you had, if you had moved forward when you were hitting level 2, you could be over here setting up a Q, knocking them up. Draven could walk forward, you know, use a stand aside. You guys, be, you, you guys could be either be killing them or um, getting summoners at the very least. So I want to see um, presence in the lane at the right times. Is what I, is what I'm trying to say. Typically, you want to be matching the aggression of your of your ADC, though. You want to be able to draw a line, a horizontal line across the lane from you to your ADC, because what that does is that means if they go on you, Draven can back you up. If if you're up here, Draven's back here, and you get engaged on, uh, Draven can't back you up. If you're back here and Draven's up here, he, you can't back him up. So. They can't take on one with one of you without taking on both of you. And always try to sneak in an auto too. The W gives a nice little slow. Uh, the typical Janna trading pattern is you walk up and you auto and you W, or you W and you auto. You don't want to just be Wing and running away typically. Sneak in a little auto there. There you go. There you go. I'm telling you, man. J Janna is a poke support in the lane. She, she really is. She's crazy in lane. Getting E at level 3 is fine. Um, since you guys hit level 2, I would have liked to see the aggressive Q. Um, knock them up, you know, burn some summoners. But getting E is fine in a lane like this where you guys didn't push your level 2 advantage. Again, another dropped auto. You could have autoed there. Lane is going fine. Lane is going fine. I would definitely be warding at this point because right now Master Yi is level 3 and he's either looking to gank bot, depending on which side of the map that he started on. He's either looking to gank bot or he's looking to um to gank top. So right now, especially because you're in a lane against Thresh who always has the opportunity to just like flash flay you and set up a really, really easy gank, uh, the fact that neither of you guys is warding right now is very, very concerning. Okay, okay. I'm... Pop quiz. Pop quiz. There is a factual way to know where Master Yi is right now. And if you don't know where Master Yi is right now, you are not looking at the minimap nearly enough. So I'll run it back one more time. There is a 100% chance that Master Yi is on the bot side of the map. And we know this because... He just used the vision plant right down here. We just saw it. So now, now we're going to, it, it'll, it'll be a little bit of a, so obviously you're, you're, you're aggressively trading, you're using your Q, which is your anti-gank tool. You, don't, you didn't see that. So right away I know that you're not looking at the map, mini-map uh, nearly enough. It doesn't look like he's coming in for a gank, but he 100% could be. Also, this isn't a Draven coaching session, but he just did the same mistake that you did. You don't want to just randomly harass with your Q. Um, you want to have meaningful Qs. Because if, if Master Yi, remember that worst case scenario, worst case scenario, Master Yi is ganking you, you need that Q to, just, to, um, 
to disable their gank. You don't want to poke with it, all right? It's it's not worth the mana, it's not worth the cooldown, it's not worth having it up when you not having it up when you need it. But Draven just did the same thing with the stand aside. You don't want to just randomly poke with your CC. Okay, okay, okay. No, nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too exciting in, in the landing phase. This is too far up. This is way too far up. Look, you're not behind minions. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to, d d to W this Thresh, but I guarantee you a good Thresh, not even a good Thresh, a mediocre Thresh. He sees you walking up like that. He takes one step forward and he flays. Or even worse, he, he raw hooks because you're not standing behind minions. He doesn't even need to flay. So you need to find a balance between meaningful poke and um, because I, I I definitely try to instill a sense of actually having presence in the lane of supports because bad supports do absolutely nothing in lane. So I can see what you're trying to do. I can see that you're trying to have presence in the lane, but you need to go about it a little more meaningfully and a little 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 smarter. Yes, okay, okay, okay. So this, finally, he capitalized. Immediately, I said, yeah, that, that was bad. And and this is this is why it's bad, because eventually, Thresh will find what he's looking for. If you go so far ahead of your ADC, you're not matching his aggression. Look, and if you get if you get attacked on, if you if, if they 2v1 you right now, Draven's not in a posi position that he can immediately get you out. This is why you want to be working on matching the aggression of your ADC. And and I say matching the aggression of your ADC because your ADC isn't always going to allow you to play aggressively. And this is what happens when you play aggressively despite your ADC playing passively. You get engaged on and you get killed. So that is why that horizontal line is so, so, so important. You can poke, you can have presence, but you need to do it intelligently. Alright. We got some booties. So itemization with Janet. It looks like you're probably building uh, redemption. It's a little too early to tell. Itemization with Janet. I'm not going to focus too much on itemization. Um because there's a lot of really really good items that you can build with this champion and uh, at this level of play there's so many more mistakes that I can be um, you know coaching on than oh you should have gone for this item over this item uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be focusing mostly on playstyle for this um for this session okay there you go good poke and you're able to play this aggressively because Master Yi is showing mid. Hopefully you knew that when you're playing that aggressively. Okay. I did like this. I like that you have the mindfulness to know it looked like you were going to go clear that ward and then you realize Draven's in danger so you immediately pull off. That's good. It's a prioritization thing. It's very, very good. It's also not a huge. It's not also not a huge necessity to clear this ward because your control ward is denying vision of it. So we're doing we're doing dragon. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. We got a free dragon. There we go. Oh, we're rotating. Nope. Okay, go back to lane. Okay, a little too far back here. Again, you're down here. He's up here. You need to match that aggression of your ADC. You want to be drawing that horizontal line. Don't 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 harass with your Q. The, okay, the re the the the. The way some of the ways, some of the intelligent and meaningful ways that I want you to be using your Q, think about it this way. Don't don't just randomly harass with it. It does like fifty damage and it takes a bit a lot of your mana away. So don't harass with it. Don't just randomly harass. Think 
about the next time you use your cue. Are you using it to shove the wave? Because it's really good for that. You, if you if you like charge a cue here and let it charge all the way up and then shove the wave if you're trying to get it to touch the turret so you can go back and buy an item or something like that. Um, or if you're trying to CC somebody in a meaningful way. Like if Master Yi is ganking you or Thresh has hooked your Draven and you're trying to CC the Thresh or the MF or if you're going for that like level 2 power spike where you're trying to take them off guard. Don't just randomly Q. Q. That's the that's a telltale sign. The second I see a Janna doing that in lane, I know she's bad at Janna. So if you stop doing that, if you hold on to your, your Q until you actually need it, uh, it's an instant improvement. That should be a kill. Nice. That, that Q was good. It was knocking up MF who was trying to save Thresh. I also, um, I don't know if you use this setting or not, but I really, I always encourage people to try out, if, especially if they play a lot of champions, try out using um, quick cast with indicators because not only does it let you see the range of the ability, but it also just kind of lets you like think. It lets you take a half a second and think, should I really be casting this ability? If you, if you watch, I know you watch the stream, so uh, you see me use it on every single champion. It just gives you like that half second of, do I really need to be using my Q? And, you know, do I really need to be using my Zenith Blade if I'm playing Leona or throw this bomb if I'm playing Zillion? Um, because it doesn't cast until you let go of the button. Whereas normal quick cast, it casts the second you press the button. So I, I would recommend you, who I can I can visually see that you're kind of just randomly throwing cues without really thinking about what, why and when you're doing them. I would try that setting. Okay. Draven should have a massive buy. This is his first buy. If this was a Draven coaching session, I would definitely would have said you need to be going back. Uh, you don't, you don't want to be staying in lane this long. But this isn't a Draven coaching session. This is good, this is good. You have nothing else in the lane to be doing, so we're clearing out vision. Good stuff. Okay, so probably don't want to be walking back into lane this way. If the wave has already crashed at the turret right, like this, just take the long way around. Because, once again, you're giving Thresh an opportunity to go in on you guys. And it doesn't look like he is, but... You're kind of pincering yourself into an area where they have a pretty big advantage. And yeah, now you guys have kind of like lost all this health for no real reason. Okay, okay. So we're just kind of chilling in lane. We see Master Yi. We see Master Yi on the map right now. He's, he's at mid, he's at mid. So, okay, so let's talk about, we've talked about mindlessly queuing. Let's talk about mindlessly warding. Because at this point, we see exactly where Master Yi, and we know where he's going to be for the next 20 to 30 seconds, however long that play lasts. There's no real reason to be warding this right now. You're pushed up to their turret, so you can really ward it whenever you want to. And who are you warding against? What, what information does this vision actually give you? It doesn't give you any vision. So let's think about it. You're at the turret, so you have control of this bush. You can ward that bush whenever you want. And you're typically, you're warding against Master Yi, right? I don't think Cho'Gath is going to roam, but let's see, even count him. You're warding against Master Yi and Cho'Gath. They're both on the map. You know exactly where they're at. Uh, you're, you're not, you're, there's a 0% chance you get ganked right here, and you can ward that bush whenever you want. So, kind of just like with the Q thing, you're, you're just kind of like warding on autopilot. And the worst part of warding on autopilot isn't the wasted wards. Uh, it's really the fact that it kind of lets me know that you're not using wards how they should be. You're not using wards to actually gain information. You're just warding because you've been told you're supposed to ward. You're just warding because you, you get free wards, so why would you not use them? Because look, I mean, this, this, this ward has given you zero information. It's nothing. Now you know what would now you know what would be a good ward, if you took the time knowing that Master Yi was in mid and that you're not going to die, taking that opportunity to know 
you have time to walk over here and get a deep ward because that ward's going to last a while and it's going to give you pivotal information about where the jungler is on the map. This one, once again, does absolutely nothing. We know Master Yi just died. This doesn't ward anything. The dragon's not up for a long time. This is just a worthless ward. You're just warding on autopilot. You've also left Draven in a really dangerous lane uh, for no real reason. You're not roaming. That That's not a terrible ward. I'll, I'll give you that one. But this one is completely worthless. You also should have hit that vision plant. This is a good ward. I would have I would have preferred, since you know Massey is dead, you could have uh, afforded to walk up a little bit further. Uh, put it on this one. And also hit the vision plant. I don't know why you didn't hit that. So, leaving Draven that long to go ward here, and then go ward here, and then go ward here, that's a little much. I would have dropped the one ward here and hit the vision plant somewhere. But this, this ward, at least, if you're looking at it, if you're using wards as they are meant to be, this one will actually give you information. This one is worthless, and the one that you put here was completely worthless. So b break that habit of just warding because you feel like you're supposed to, and try to try to use your wards to actually like give yourself an advantage. To actually get information that you didn't have already. Look at this. Look at this. That's a good ward. This is a ward that actually tells you something. And look, now your team you might actually you might you might actually kill him now because of that ward. You are going to kill him now because of the ward that you dropped. Okay, you didn't you didn't kill him, but also 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 bad, terrible exhaust. Let's talk about this. You can't slow master Yi. I don't know if that you just didn't know that bit of game knowledge, but flash exhausting him here is definitely not the play. You guys should have just been happy with getting his ult. Flashing exhausting, look, cannot be slowed. It's worthless. He's not damaging you, so the exhaust is completely wasted. So there's some good stuff going on, and there's some really, really bad stuff going on. Okay, we're doing the dragon now. This isn't a terrible dragon, honestly. You guys have vision of uh, all three places they can come from. We have information. We know that Master Yi doesn't have ult, so he's probably not going to be willing to fight. Looks like they pushed you off it. That's fine, too. That's fine, too. Now, what you don't want to do is dance back and forth and not make a cons like an actual like executive decision until Master Yi comes back and kills you. What you don't want to be doing is, is this. Taking free dragon damage and like, oh, maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. So be concise and consecutive, or executive with your decisions. You guys also are aware you're dancing on vision, right? D when I say dancing, I don't mean literally like, oh, ha, 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 we're dancing at a party. Uh, dancing means like going back and forth, like st maybe doing the dragons, maybe we're not going to do the dragon, we're dancing it. We're trying to look for, a, for an opening or an opportunity. Uh, but dancing on their vision, uh, it usually doesn't work. <laughs> Because they, they know if you're actually doing the dragon. It's very similar to baiting. Also, Draven is not here. Draven is not here. You definitely want to hold on to your Q a lot longer. You want to wait for them to commit. And in team fight, in team fights, you're not a Leona. You're not the one that is like, oh, Thresh is out of position. I'm gonna go catch him. Uh, you're a peeler. You're a reactive champion. You want to wait until Thresh goes in and commits to the play, then knock him up, then disables his play. That's what Janna specializes in. She is a she's she's a champion that specializes like right now. You could disable MF's alt or get a two man Q now that Thresh is actually committed to the play, but you can't really do that because you've used your Q. So she's a champion that kind of dismantles the enemy's good plays. In laning phase, it's a little bit different. You you want to be you know aggressively poking and determining the 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 rate the, the tempo of the lane, but in team fights, usually Janas that try to like force stuff like you just did, you they end up dead. Not the worst thing though. We're still good. We're still good. Okay, 
So, are you paying attention to the minimap? Because we just saw where Master Yi is. Oh, there we go. There we go. We saw him. We see him, buddy. Okay. So, probably need to work a little bit on awareness. I know there's a lot to focus on. I know there's a lot to focus on. This game this game is it's kind of like sensory overload. But you need to kind of hone in on the important things. Especially in a role like support. Support operates so much differently than all the other roles. Uh, because you kind of need to... Like, the more information that you can obtain and like use to your advantage like that's how you carry games as support you don't carry games through just like raw damage or you know other things that like typical carry roles do you do it through smart wards and knowing your champion pool and awareness and things like that I have no complaints about what I just saw with you and Draven that, that was fine you got him out All right. So once once again, what are these what are these words conveying? You see everyone that is at risk of ganking you on the map right now. This is going to get cleared out. They also see you, so you're putting yourself in danger, putting yourself in the river like this. Um, and also, what are the who are these words warding for? You're just warding because you feel like you have to. We literally see Master Yi over here. Master Yi is over here, and whether he dies or lives, you know he's not ganking you. So try to just be a little bit more meaningful with your wards. Honestly think about not just where they're at right now, but where they're going to be. Where the position that they're at, what does that allow you to ward? Because warding in the jungle is scary. Walking up into the space and into their side of the map, it's really scary. Because Master Yi could be there. But Master Yi can't be here if he's over here. So get yourself some deep vision wards and be uh, be happy with that. And don't waste a ward on this. Unless you can protect that control ward, that's going to get cleared before the next dragon. Okay, now we see dr now we see Thresh Top. So this is an, a unique position we haven't been in before. Because now we can dive MF. And Janna isn't the best diver, but she can definitely dive. Don't do this. Don't do this. You can't cue the turret. You're not clearing anything. So back to that meaningful cues. So we see Thresh is still over there. Thresh is still over there. So what can we do now? What can we do now? Can we get plates? Can we get the first turret? Okay, so if you had your Q, you could have knocked her out of that. That wasn't a bad attempt at a Q. I see what you're doing there. That one that one was at least meaningful. You're, you're trying you're trying to catch her out. Okay, we see Thresh. We see Thresh coming down. So our opportunity to dive has passed. That's fine. You're not meeting the aggression of your ADC. You're way, 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 way behind him. Okay, so I see the Q. I see the Q attempt. It's not bad. It's not bad. What would have been great is standing a little bit behind him and then queuing now. I think um, th this is kind of a difficult one because Th Draven is like being an idiot and is way, way, way too far. What I would probably do is I would recognize he's caught right around now. I would probably start um, standing back here, charging up a Q, trying to get a double Q, and I wouldn't—I don't think I'd even use my heal on him. My uh, my ultimate. I think I'd probably just let him go. So not too bad. We see Master Yi on the map. But unlike Janna, Thresh is a very, very good diver. So honestly, at this point, I wouldn't even be sticking around here. I would be backing now because you're gonna lose uh you're gonna lose tempo if you don't back here. You're gonna lose an opportunity to buy. Your little your your paltry, your, your your little E is not gonna save the turret. Uh they're either going to be able to get this turret or they're not. It's, it really doesn't matter. Like you, you being here makes absolutely no difference. You're just like a minor inconvenience. Uh, 
So I would have definitely channeled my back and been ready to walk back to a lane with Draven because what you've done now is now you've staggered yourself because now you're out of mana and now you need to go back and buy items and get your mana back and now you've done something called staggering yourself which is when you leave your ADC in lane by itself. You can't do anything in lane by yourself, right? Neither can Draven. So you're going to be pressing B here, right? Yeah, you're going to be pressing B, and now you've staggered yourself. And you've saved maybe, maybe 100 health from this turret. I don't know. Maybe let's, let's be generous and say 300 health. It really doesn't matter, though. So I guess uh, the lesson there is, I guess, kind of learn when to cut ties with your ADC and your turret because there's more important things. Okay, okay, we're getting chased around by Yi. We're in the wind tunnel. What are we doing? We, 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 what was, <laughs> okay, I, I don't, I don't know what that was, I don't. Let's, let's run that back. It almost looks like you DC'd here. Because you didn't. Okay. That was a better exhaust anyways on Yi, because that actually exhausted some of his damage. It very, very strange. I'm not sure how to really coach that one. I think I, I, I think you DC'd there. Need to be a little, a little more aware that Master Yi can just kind of like shred you guys. Respect his Q. Busted champion, especially in low elo. And at this point, I'm going to assume that your team is like uh, hardcore flaming. And morale is very low because three or four bad plays just happened in a row. Alright, so we've got an Athenes. That's good. Um, when you get a little bit better, like I, I said I wasn't going to harp on the itemization, but I feel the need to at least say this. When you get a little bit better um, at like reflexes and stuff like that and, and game knowledge, Mikhail's is a really, really good item against Thresh because you can actually cleanse the, th the, the, uh, the hook off of him, which doesn't allow Thresh to reactivate his Q, get on top of him, and flay. But Athene's is totally fine too. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of really good items on Janna. Enchanter items. Itemization is really nice. Okay. Definitely not the time to be clearing this. 100% not the time to be clearing this. Worst case scenario, right? Worst case scenario, Thresh is literally within, like, one inch of you. You've now put yourself in an angle where he can walk up and flay you, or he could hook you. Uh, and worst case scenario, Master Yi's right here. He lanterns in Master Yi, and you're dead again. Let's see what actually happens. So... <laughs> Worst case scenario, Master Yi is right there. And now you guys are in another bad scenario. So that that is kind of why it's so important to be always running that worst case scenario in the back of your mind. Because sometimes the worst case scenario happens. So think to yourself, before you walk up and clear this ward, it, and it kind of just seems like, a, you know, you're supposed to clear wards. And there's a ward there, so why not clear it? Because there's there's consequences to these things. Okay. It doesn't really matter what goes on over there. I'm not there to coach them. I'm only here to coach you. Okay. Now, since you have a little more vision, a little more knowledge of what happened to their team and you've got people in a, a, an area that you can actually run to now is an okay time to clear this there you go good job clearing this one too i got no vision on dragon so now you set your team up for a nice future dragon fight okay we see thresh collapsing see thresh collapsing now would be a very nice time to throw it, because this is a choke point, right? 
So what you can do is when you see that, I mean, you waited a little long to do it, but when you see that they're either, the enemy is trying to use this choke point and respond to your dragon, what you can do is you can like charge up a Q right here, and then what that's going to do is even if you if you don't reactivate it, it's going to it's going to buy you like two to three seconds of time because they're not going to want to walk through there. Like right about three seconds prior to this is when you should have tried, started charging it up, but you got it now. You wait, yourself, you, you wait for yourself to get hooked, which is not great, but the idea was there. The execution was a little lacking, but we got the dragon, so we're gonna we're still gonna consider that a win. Nice. So this is pretty obvious. Um. 0-5 is a really bad score. With Janna, you want to be getting like 3 to 4 deaths per game tops. Sometimes that will be higher, sometimes that will be lower, but being 0-5 at 24 minutes means you're mispositioning a lot. There you go. Back him up, back him up. What are you doing? Stay close, stay close. So, okay, so there's a, there's a concept called presence. And presence means you are staying close to the fight out of danger. You are staying as close as to the fight as your health bar will permit. Uh, and you started great here. You started great. He, Udyr is obviously taking all of the, uh, the, the aggression from Renekton. Renekton uses everything on Udyr. He's fighting him. You're standing close, but you're still providing presence. You're here. You're making the fight a lot harder for Renekton, and then you kind of just let him walk away. And now the distance is too great for you to have presence. Good try on the good try on the Q. That would have been a meaningful Q. That's what I like to see. Hmm. Wow, this was a really great push. Honestly, um, I would have called for a Baron. After you guys killed Master Yi, you guys have a Heimerdinger and a Rise with Teleport up. I probably would have called for a Baron there. That, that honestly could have been a game swinger. You guys killed Renekton and uh, Master Yi right around here. You've got three people ready to instantly rotate. You've got a relatively safe one, relatively safe Baron with Heimerdinger. Yeah, I'd, I'd do Baron, like, right now. So I would be spam pinging Baron at this moment. But you still got a good push, even if you don't get Baron. You guys got, uh, you guys get two turrets, get a couple kills. You're in a great spot now. Reset, though, because you're, you're overstaying. You guys are definitely overstaying. This is, uh, yeah, not something that you want to be pushing. So I would be spamping in them. I would be channeling my back. Because wh what you're doing by sticking around, this is kind of like the bad side of presence. The bad side of presence is sticking around for plays that you get, you know that you're going to lose. Uh, and that kind of emboldens players like Heimerdinger and Rise Because they're like, well, we've got a Janna here. That means, that means we're good, right? But what's actually going to happen is you guys are like hardcore overstaying. And unless you just massively outplay them, you're going to get killed. Okay, okay. We even got two kills. Are we still overstaying? We're still overstaying. And now what happens? You die, and you set them up for a very, very easy Baron. So, kind of, I guess the lesson there would be to sort of learn your lesson, l learn your, uh, learn your limits. I would have loved to see you guys do Baron after you got, after you killed Master Yi. You didn't, that's fine. You still got two kills and two turrets, but then leave. Leave. Because now what you've done is given them Baron. And it looks like they're they're actually taking their opportunity. Oh, they're, they're not doing Baron. Wow. Well, what can you do? It's silver. Okay. So... 
you guys have the right idea. Someone's pinging mid. You can push one more way, but then you want to back up because what you want to do now is put pressure somewhere on the map so that they don't just do it. So that they're like slightly pressured to not do Baron because they can 100% do Baron, and I think they know it, and I think they're doing it. But um, yeah, I I would probably push one more wave and then back and then try to defend. They're really not. They're still not doing Baron. Wow, that's that's almost tilting me. Okay. So now we're fighting near the dragon. We're poking with Draven ult. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Good ult, good ult, great ult, great ult. Now, oh. Okay. Probably needed a Q at some point here. This was a really, really good ult. You had presence. You realized someone was caught. You went in and disengaged. But we never used our tornado. Tornado would be great going through here. This fight wasn't your fault. I, wa I want to, um, I want to emphasize that you, I, you played it like half well. It was, it was the idea was there to disengage. Uh, make sure you get those Qs out. Even if it's just tapping Q one time, letting it charge up while you use your ultimate, that's that's a perfectly valid uh, combo. Because it'll automatically re recast once it's fully charged. And the amount of knock-up time and the damage that it does also increases. I don't, I don't know if you know that. Okay, so the rest of this game is probably just going to be like... You guys desperately trying to uh, make up this gold deficit against their Baron. But we'll see. Okay, we see Thresh behind us. We see Thresh behind us. This is a good ward. This is this is a really good ward because you're tracking Thresh. That was great. That was really, really good. You're tracking Thresh. You want to keep information on him? Yep, see, look. He's walking straight through here. And now you have information. That's good. That's how you want to be warding. Wow, you actually, you guys actually got a uh, an inhib. Look at that. Your ward literally gave... Granted you th Thresh's Flash. Great job. And this is this is going full Fiesta. This is going full Fiesta. People are fighting at like three parts of the map. Okay, now we're running it down. Okay, 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 okay. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Because this, scenarios like this, it is really hard to chase a Janna that's running away. Because she's a disengaged champion. She can shoot... A tornado this way while she keeps running this way so if you guys are getting chased down the lane like this good idea good idea but you didn't land it on on trogath who's the actual threat but it's fine that's fine okay at least at least you know that i just want to i just want to emphasize it's really really hard to chase janna because that's what she does she's disengaging they're trying to engage you disengage Okay, I just kind of got caught and died there. Okay, presence though, presence though. Your Draven's doing something crazy. You don't want to walk all the way around the, this wall. Just go right here. Presence, stay near him. Stay near him. Now disengage. See, this is the problem with just randomly using your Q like that, man. You don't have it when you need it. You want to do meaningful Qs. This is the problem. This is the problem. What are you shooting at? You're not using your Q for anything. You're using it to clear minions. That's not your job right now. Your job is to disengage this gigantic Tyrannosaurus Rex off of your ADC. But you don't have your Q now. This all could have been different if you had your Q. This all this this would have been completely a different, completely different fight if you had saved your Q. Hey, they got the Baron. That's 
crazy. It took him that long. Okay. What are we doing here? What? What are we doing here, bud? Okay. I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that was a pathfinding bug where, like, you clicked over here and Janna couldn't decide if she's supposed to go this way or that way. Uh, what I would say to that, to get around a lot of pathfinding bugs, is why you want to do, like, itty-bitty uh, right clicks. Like, closer to you so you can more precisely control uh, her exact pathing. So like usually I'm not just like clicking way over here and just letting Janna decide where to where she wants to go. I'm usually clicking like this distance away from Janna, like right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. So I can very, very precisely tell her like which path to go. It also helps like have a greater control over your like jukes and things like that. Oh my lord. Okay, so your team's in the pit. What are we doing? You, you need to be backing up Draven here. You have you have to have presence. You cannot just be... You cannot just be... You look lost back here. I'm not sure what in tarnation you are doing, but you've got to... You've got to be better about sticking closer to your carries. Again, another, another bad Q. Mindless. Worst case scenario, someone pops out now, and you don't you don't have a cue to dis disengage. So stay close. There you go. This is your, this is your role in the game. You want to stay close. Stop doing that cue. Stop doing that cue. Uh, you want to stay close and apply shields and disengage this Renekton when he jumps on them. Renektons are very very easy to disengage. A lot of their champions are. But you've got to be close enough to do it. You've got to be staying in range within your carries. You need to be matching their aggression. Okay, so look. You just used your Q to, to Q a minion. And what, what happens now? You don't have it to knock up this Cho'Gath. That's a good Q. See how hard it is to chase you when you don't when you don't waste your Q? Look at that. Look how much space you just created. They wanted your booty, bro. And now they can't have it. That's what you need to be using your Q for. See how hard it is to chase you when you don't just waste it? All right, they're running it down. They're running it down. Buy fast, dude. Buy fast. The game Buy fast, bro. The game-changing fight is going on. Also, uh, when you buy Athenes, um, you're no longer just a healer shielder. You are also a you're no longer just a shielder. You're healing with your E. So you're going to be storing up blood wells. I think it's called blood charges. Uh, okay, it's not. It's not called blood charges. It's the unholy healing. Whatever it's called, you deal damage and then you're storing up charges. And the next person you heal, it's next person you shield with your E, it's going to heal them. So be watching once you buy that item. Understand that you're now a healer as well, with your E. So you know, look who actually needs the healing. Not necessarily who who just needs the immediate shielding, but who actually needs healed up. I thought these things were called blood charges. Why did I think that? No, oh, they are. Okay. Damage Delta jam Champions is blood charges. Boom! Score Ioki. Okay, for real, you are wasting way too much time in the in, in the base. Look where every other member of your team is. You need to be backing them up. You need to you need to be better about staying staying near them. And one thing I would recommend for you. Look, you could have shielded so much of that damage. You could have shielded and healed so much of that damage if you were there earlier. One thing I can recommend for you is uh, Moby Boots. Swap out these uh, l uh, Lucidity Boots, the CDR Boots. Grab Mobies. Since Janna is going to spend so much of her time in the back line, and she's not actually going to be doing like a ton of damage, um, you can. You, it's, it's much easier to stay with your carries if you've got Mobies. So that's what I would recommend to you itemization-wise. I know I said I wouldn't harp on the items, but try Mobies.
Nice bait. Okay, so you just bleed out at this point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking to, uh, about the things that I really want you to focus on. Uh, try those different rune sets. The comment page that I mentioned in the beginning, you can go back in the beginning of the, uh, the video and listen if you want to again. Um, try those different rune pages. I would recommend you the Airy page. Airy is really really great, especially um, if you're not going to be if you're not comfortable enough or you, you're not you're not high rank enough to like understand when you can be playing aggressive and w which matchups. Just do the Airy page. Airy is a re really really great rune for uh, for Janna. Um, presence in laning phase I want you to be drawing those horizontal lines and making sure that you're not going too far ahead and too far back um, presence outside of lane is something I've seriously have seen you struggle a lot with um, just knowing if you don't know where to be that's fine it's a very very complex game there's a lot of working moving parts sometimes you just don't know where to be like for instance you shouldn't be here you should be here let someone else be the leader then that's fine for you space bazooka i think i think you should just let other players be the leader just be near them be ready to assist them walk around with them follow them um a couple of the itemization things that i've talked about uh meaningful cues that's the biggest mistake i've seen you do is you just kind of waste your cue you just kind of don't really understand what it's for um and kind of the same thing with the vision and warding you guys got skunk that's going to be the game um but uh, yeah, man, if you have any questions at all, you know where to find me on Discord, on Twitch. You, you can, you know, PM me on MySpace. I don't care. Get in touch with me if you have any questions. You want me to go over any other things. I hope this coaching session helped you, and I wish you the best of luck in climbing in Season 10. And uh, anyone that's watched this session on YouTube, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, yeah, take it easy, guys.